Welcome, everyone. If you're watching this live, if not, uh, greetings from the past uh, to this super special, awesome bonus live episode I promised on the podcast. If you've listened to it already, this is of the this is a review of the January twentieth seedling show. I am joined here with Sebastian, probably better known to most of you as at twf eighty seven on Twitter. And we're going to go through the show. We're going to start at the top of the card, uh, the main event, the, the tag team title match. We're going to work our way back to the opening matches. This is somewhat of a test run for me. Uh, we're going to be uh, kind of doing this like uh, I would for interviews for future guest spots on the podcast and other similar sort of things. So we're going to try to keep this at about a 30-minute maximum. And hopefully we get through everything. But at the very least, we will get through the top of the card, which is obviously the big stuff that people really care about so uh let me hit some buttons here uh, why are you uh i think you have to unmute yourself apparently ah okay there good. you go how you doing good good thanks uh thanks for having me so uh let's just start uh very simply how what'd you think of the show as a whole um uh, i i enjoyed this show a lot um i watched it last night um and i thought it was Overall, a good show. Um, some of the matches uh, stood out to me more than others, but like nothing bad on the show, really. Yeah, I'd agree with that. There's a couple matches that weren't necessarily my sort of thing, but uh, there was definitely, especially the top two matches, I think were worth going out of your way to watch if you're into the soul, if you're into seedling as a whole, or if you just want to watch you know, tough women try to murder each other, which of course, as you all know, it, that is definitely my sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I imagine based on previous conversations, we might have a slightly different opinion about the high speed match, but uh, we can Maybe. get to that at some point. We'll, we'll definitely get to that one, even if we uh, spend most of our time on the big ones, but let's start yeah. at the top. The uh, big singles match, Nane Takahashi defending her Beyond the Seed Championship against Yoshiko. I was a little underwhelmed by this one. It wasn't, it met expectations, but didn't exceed them like I thought it could have. But uh, I'm curious on what you thought on this one, because I was still pretty, uh, I was still pretty on edge after that uh, tag title match. Yeah, I, um, I thought that I largely would probably agree with you. Um, I thought that it had a bit of a slow start um picked up quite a bit towards the end i thought the end se the ending sequence was really good um but overall as a match i was yeah i was i was a bit underwhelmed too uh, yeah. and i think yeah it definitely suffered from from following that that tag match yeah i th i think my my thing with yoshiko is that she's not i don't think she's great at longer singles matches Mm -hmm. I think her best situation is ta either longer tag matches or shorter singles matches. She had that match with uh, uh, Yumiko Hoda in uh, Oz Academy uh, er earlier in January, which I thought was fantastic. I think that's sort of where her maximum max level is in, comes in terms of singles matches to keep it like 10 to 15 minutes. But as a whole, I still thought this was a really good match. It's just that big gap in the middle there that just kind of feels like when is it going to end when is it going to pick up is something else going to happen at some point it's it's a little yeah. tough yeah, yeah i yeah I, I think that was probably how i felt about it too really um i mean it's it was not nice first offense so you you kind of yeah assume she's not going to lose so you know it was a good kind of like first offense yoshiko obviously being like one of the big one of the few names in seedling but like get that out of the way sort of yeah it was it was good but um i don't think it'll be like one of her most memorable title defenses when everything is said and done yeah that's uh, the other kind of point i was wondering about too is you know yoshiko seemed like somebody that if you were going to ask me who's going to take the title off of takahashi it would have been her but mm -hmm. i don't imagine they're going to do that anytime soon now especially if you maybe if takahashi has this title for a long period of time but it's what, do you, what are your thoughts on that do you think maybe it's nakajima who eventually gets it maybe uh takahashi just has the title for a year more or something of that sort yeah that's that's how i would see it um personally i i think nakajima is probably going to be the one to take the title off nanai so yeah 
I would guess they're going to be building to that at some point, especially, I mean, now with um, Ayame Sasamura's injury, maybe maybe that'll speed things up a bit. I, we don't know. But yeah, I, I would have thought, especially given that she beat Yoshiko, I, I, I see Nakajima being that to sort of end goal of this title reign. I believe she already has another match coming up, or maybe it's already happened. It was against Yumi, something like that. Or yeah. not Yumi, Yuna. Uh, Yuna know. Mizumori, I think. Yeah. Not yeah. too familiar with her, in all honesty. Maybe I am, and I just don't remember I am. But that'll be a, that seems like a kind of a walk in the park sort of title defense for her. Yeah, oh, that that one definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm also, I, I'm not particularly familiar with um, yeah. Mizumori, but I... I God, feel that that's another just sort of, you know, have someone else challenge so that you sort of rack up a few wins before you you get to the more serious, like, competition. So I think we might as well just move on to a match that I'm going to guess we both were into. I know I was into it. I absolutely adored this, but that would be the Beyond the Sea Tag Championship match of Arisa Nakajima and Ayame Sasamura versus Miyuki Takase and Yumiko Hota. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I really like this match. Um, and, and yeah, like you said earlier, sort of, sort of overshadowed the main event, really. Um, I thought this was a really strong showing. Um, I, I liked the way that it was kind of set up and paced as well, because, I mean, Yumiko Hotta is very impressive. She's not the most mobile worker right now so i think they've played to her strengths with with like the brawling um yeah the blood obviously with sasamura yeah. looked really really cool at the end um sasamura looked like an absolute badass at that point uh she's what a year and a half if that into her career did she debut last year was it or um, i think she was 17 but yeah very so. very uh still very like <laughs> relatively new yeah so yeah she's new enough but she I, I feel like she might have over-delivered. This is probably the best match of hers I've seen so far, unless there's something I'm completely glossing over. But uh, you're yeah, very impressed by her in this one. I thought she was great. Um, and her and Arisa, yeah, both both looked great. And I, and I, I liked the Hotta Takase team as well, because oh, yeah. Takase could do the sort of, you know, heavy lifting, as it were. When, and Hotta just got to look like a complete badass, no-selling you know, beating people up with chairs and the chain and stuff. So I think it, it worked really well. There, there was a one spot of the match, and I kind of mentioned this one on Twitter already, where I thought it was a kind of a ridiculous sort of thing where uh, Hoto was basically out uh, inside the ring when she accepted a tag. I thought yeah. that was a little a little ridiculous, but I, that's normal. Like on a lesser match, I think it would have taken me out of it, but it definitely didn't do that on this one. Uh, I think everything else around it really impressed me, especially when it got to the uh, moment of... Uh, Hota and Nakajima brawling outside the ring, and it, there was a certain point in there where Nakajima just absolutely snapped. Yeah, yeah. The um, definitely the interactions between like Nakajima and Hota were very, very fun, and feels like they're sort of leading up to a singles match at some point, like either in Actress Girls or maybe in Seedling, um, which which look which could be really good. Um, but yeah, there there was. The tag rules seemed a bit weird. I'm pretty sure Nakajima also took a tag when she was kind of in the ring already. Yeah. But yeah. I, I didn't take me out of the match, certainly. Yeah, it's always a big plus side on that. And I agree that it seems like they were building to a singles match, but Seedling tends to do a lot of that anyways, where they have kind of that tag match as part of a build, either to a match that's already announced or something that they're just going to do at some point. It's mm -hmm. a little... I think it was a little strange kind of seeing that in a tag match but they haven't had ta a tag title match but they haven't had those tag titles for very long so that just probably is going to be something they continue to do in tag matches in general yeah i mean it's interesting because obviously by the time this aired we already knew that sasamura was injured yeah so it'll be interesting to see what they do with that because it sounds like she's going to be out for quite a while uh, so I wonder if they're going to, you know, maybe give up, have to forfeit the belts or something, or are they just going to put them on hold until Sasamura comes back? Yeah, I'm interested on in that too, because I haven't seen any news on that, but other than Sasamura is going to be out, I think it was three to six months is the estimate. So yeah. that's, if it's three months, that's short enough where you can kind of get by keeping the belts on them. But uh, I don't know if I personally, if I were in charge, would risk 
three months if it could end up being six because that's a little on the lengthy side in most cases even some even for a company like seedling that doesn't run that often right and they generally run like a called aquan show every month so you'd be missing quite a few big shows yeah. with, without the titles so yeah I, I guess it depends on on length of injury and and like what they you know decide they want to do going forward but it's a shame because i think that that i love that team um yeah. and i thought this match was probably not quite as good as the borderless match where they won the titles um uh, but you know, another good match, another very good match, really. So I would have loved to see them keep going, like build up some defenses. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I guess if you were going to take the tiles off them, maybe you could put them on a team that then Nakajima and Sasamuna beat when, when she comes back. And that could be like an interesting story. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. I, uh, if you're if you have to strip the titles from them, if you're even if you don't give it back to them, they probably should be the first one in line when they are both ready to go. Unless at that point Nakajima's lined up to take the singles title, I suppose. But I guess we'll kind of have to wait and see on that one because that that singles championship is tough to predict. I think at this point. Yeah, yeah. I um, I mean, I could see Nanai holding it for a lot for a while. Yeah. I, I, I don't think she's going to have a short reign because she's the first champion, you know. And I don't know if she even, especially if she has a longer reign, I don't know if she actually ever gets another one. I guess it kind of depends on how, what she does long term, but it wouldn't shock me, especially if she holds it for like a year or even longer. This could be just kind of a one and done for her just to establish the title. Yeah, yeah. So I could see them holding off on a Nakajima win for, for a, a while, um, unless they now, you know, decide they want to speed that up because of the injury. But um, it's, it's, a, it's come at a bad time, really. Like, yeah. Sakura is young enough that she's, you know, she can recover from it, I'm sure. But it's, uh, it's unfortunate that it was just like right at the sort of getting into the, the start of their reign. Yeah, she'll be back though. Uh, zero doubt on that. It's not a terrible injury. It's just, a, yeah, like you said, a poorly timed one, but I expect we will see her in some more high profile matches probably by the end of the year, as far as seedling goes. So yeah. Yeah. Good luck to I, her. I think um I, I was sort of trying to listen to the to the commentary on on Nico, yeah. which I I'm not always a fan of, but um they did a decent job, I thought, of mixing the sound quality this time. Like you could actually sort of hear the the crowd noises. But um I think Nanae was saying she's never faced uh sasamura in a singles match the tag match they did in niigata which hasn't aired yet was the first time they'd been in, together in a match um so i think she was sort of saying she's you know interested in, in potential potential matches going forward uh when she comes back from injury i'll be honest if that's the route they end up going i am all behind that uh i think sasamura works well with pretty much everybody i've seen her with so far and i don't think takahashi is capable of having an absolutely terrible singles match with anybody in seedling at this point so yeah i mean i wouldn't bring it on i wouldn't i wouldn't expect sasamura to be the one to win the title off no. but yeah maybe maybe even a even a, a defense against her but uh yeah i think she's they're obviously very high on sasamura so yeah and going back on that uh nico uh audio you were talking about i, I agree this one sounded a little better overall than usual but uh Oh God, I I don't want any sort of muffling of the uh, crowd in these shows. It's it wasn't like you said it wasn't as bad, but it was still noticeable. I eh. yeah, it was. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of the Nico Pro setup, but um, obviously it's great that they give us so many shows. But yeah. yeah, the the commentary often I feel like can take me out of the matches. But at least this one, they felt like they they'd done a better job with the audio and. Nanae was quite fun in her reactions to a lot of yeah. things that were happening as well. Like she, her, you know, even in watching her own match where she reacted to it and you're sort of like, well, she obviously knows what's hap going to happen, but. Yeah. Uh, I also kind of got the feeling just by listening to her that she hadn't actually seen the uh, tag title match. Maybe, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Because at that point, even if she does typically watch matches, I'm sure she was working on her own at that point. So. Yeah, yeah. So they probably, probably missed that one from the actual like show. Yeah, 
Yeah. But yeah, that was the uh, Beyond the Sea Tag Championship. Have you got any other thoughts on that one before we move uh, down the card? Um. Well, actually, so one thing I remembered is I'm pretty sure that uh, at one point they, uh, I think it was Hotta, like, hit the referee with a chair or something yeah. by accident, and then I on commentary was saying she should have been disqualified, which I just thought was funny given how <laughs> yeah, ridiculous like the match was in, in it overall. Yeah. And there was so much brawling in it. Yeah. You know, so it just seemed to kind of, that was quite a funny throwaway line that she was saying on commentary. Yeah. The, the joys of knowing Japanese, I suppose. I obviously did not pick up on that. So, well, uh, you know, yeah, it's, well, it's, it, it's not, it's not like a, an integral part of the story, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I really like this match. I thought it was thought it was very strong. Um, Honestly, I, it's probably near the top of my match of the year list so far. It'll probably drop down, of course, by the end. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I love these sort of tag matches. It's it felt very aggressive at times, and I'm all for that. So yeah, you can't really. I have no serious complaints about it at all. No, yeah, um, I, I thought they they worked really well with all the people there. Everyone came out of it looking good. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. All right, going down the list, then we've got a six-man tag: Hamako Hoshi, Makoto, and Tsukasa Fujimoto versus Hiroi Nagahama, Ryo Mizunami, and Sai. Uh, I'm gonna let you start on this one because this was definitely not my sort of thing. Yeah, I thought this was fine, um, but not nothing really that particularly memorable yeah. in this match. You know, it seemed like people in the crowd were enjoying it. People when they, when everyone did their sort of shtick, but yeah. Um, yeah, nothing really that great from this one. It it felt a bit like they were yeah getting people on the card, like get the ice ribbon people on the yeah. card, get the wave people on the card. And also sort of have a bit of a buffer between the high speed match and like the serious matches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mizunami looked good, I thought. Um I think and, Mizu uh, I think Mizunami typically looks good, but uh yeah, I think yeah. I think she absolutely stole the match. Uh this she yeah. was hamming it up for a while there, which was great. Uh, her interactions with Fujimoto were great. Yeah. Uh, everything Mizunami does in these tag matches is fantastic. I can't say I'm super high on her as a singles wrestler necessarily, but Every mm -hmm. I see very few tag matches. I don't absolutely uh, love her participation, in, even though this wasn't like I said. Hamako Hoshi is not my sort of wrestler, not my style at all. But uh, everybody else, I can at least like to an extent, and I think Mizunami was by far the best part of this match. Yeah, no, I I, I would agree with that. I thought Mizunami is uh, Mizunami and Fujimoto were really, really yeah. good. Their, their, their like, interactions together in the match I thought were very good. Um, I would have liked to have seen more Nagahama, however. Uh, I feel like yeah. she didn't do much on this one, but that might have just been kind of... Maybe, some, maybe even something to do with the wave hiatus, where they're just trying to maybe even keep her a little cool to build her up when wave comes back that's almost the feeling i got but maybe i'm just looking too much into it yeah i mean i think yeah i guess mizunami was really the star of that team yeah um, haven't seen too much of sai before yeah. and i mean she seemed like okay but i'm probably the weaker member of that team yeah um, but like everyone in it was 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 decent um yeah it was it was like a fun match but not one that you're really gonna remember after you've watched this show yeah agreed on that one so let on that note let's just move on then to the high speed match of kaho kobayashi versus meiho shizuki versus tsukushi and this was one i kind of enjoyed i didn't fully enjoy it. i'm always hit or miss on these high speed matches they're there's definitely moments in here I liked, but a lot of the referee silliness doesn't necessarily do much for me. I like Natsuki Tayo, but she's gets a little too involved, I think, in these matches sometimes. Um, mm. Your thoughts on that? Um, I love this match. Okay. I have a lot of debate about if this was my favorite match of the night or not. Uh, between this one and the time match, I thought it was great, but I really like the high-speed style matches, so... I would kind of biased towards it, but I thought yeah. this was a really, really good high speed match. Like Tsukushi and Kaho Kobayashi are just very, very good at it. And Meiho Shizuki felt like she really, you know, would fit in with them. She didn't feel like she was out of place at all. Um, but yeah, I just like pretty much loved everything about it. Um, particularly the sort of 
the referee shenanigans, uh, you know, I thought they were like, uh, at least they weren't too, too uh, intrusive in this match. Um, but I did enjoy all the sort of, you know, Squishy pushing May in front of Kaho Kobayashi's drop kicks and then, you know, sort of blaming Kaho Kobayashi for it, even though she'd been the one to do it. all those like interactions yeah. within the match, I thought were really, really good. Yeah, I'll agree with you on that. Um, even though I'm not always huge on these high speed matches, I, I thought a lot of the personal interactions between them were very top notch. It's if we, it made me more than anything though want to see a, a Kobayashi Tsukusi uh, singles match, and uh, we're not going to get that for a while at the very least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, 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 it might happen at some point, I guess. But yeah, yeah. I was in Mexico, I think, right now though. So right, yeah, it'll be a minute. But no, I, 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 I like it, and I mean, I feel like May almost has to to take taking over like the Mio Momono spot yeah. in the high speed kind of match here because yeah she, she like i said she looked she didn't look out of place at all oh, um, uh, yeah if if anybody's been listening to me on the podcast and if not uh, welcome but uh if you have i i absolutely love may uh her and mikoto shindo in uh marvelous are both fantastic and i think i would agree that may right now pretty much me the longer mio momono is out injured the more likely it is for may to just jump into that position mm -hmm. and i would I wouldn't be worried for Mio because I think she'll be fine when she gets back because obviously Chigusa Nagayo likes her, but uh, I'd be worried at least from a, the Western fan uh, fan base in my little corner of wrestling fandom uh, that May could potentially uh, jump into that spot. Yeah, I think Mio is still like definitely better than May. Yeah. Obviously, May's still like not even been wrestling for a year, so obviously you wouldn't expect her to be. But uh, I mean, Mio... I think will be fine, like you say. I mean, she's got her own charisma and her own sort of, you know, stuff that I think she'll not lose any fans by being out for an, an extended period of time. But like, but yeah, May and um, Mikoto Shindo and and even Maria look look really really good. So it's I like I enjoy the fact that we get to see them on all these other cards. You know, it's yeah. great that Marvelous is working with all these other companies and. You know, seedlings featuring them in these kind of matches are almost perfect for the rookies, really, because they're short. You know, they 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 don't get exposed by their maybe lack of advanced work rate in this kind of match. You know, they can do all the things they do really well, um, and and losing doesn't really hurt you if you lose a high speed match like this. Exactly. Uh, yeah, There's nothing else I can really add to there. Any uh, kind of final thoughts on this one before we go to the uh, curtain jerker? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I just really liked it, to be honest. I thought if you're going to watch a high-speed match, this is probably, like, up there with a sort of pinnacle of the the genre, if you will. You know, it's... it's um, Yeah, it was good. Interesting that Squishy got the win. Like, she's getting a bit more of a push as well. It seems an ice ribbon right now. Yeah, she's got a uh, uh, title shot coming up next month, I think. Yeah. So that, uh, that, yeah. that should be really good. I'm not yeah. huge on the ice ribbon, but uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that one. Yeah, so so yeah, I guess she's kind of building up a bit of momentum here as well. But um, yeah, no, I, I loved it. thought it was great. Yeah, sounds good. Let's go on then to the first match of the show was Asuka versus Himeka Arita. And uh, this was the kind of match I really, really like. Um, it was more of that underdog match where Arita was, you know, just trying to throw whatever she could. Asuka really just trying to just kind of sit there and take it. Didn't really think much of her, but there was a certain breaking point where Asuka realized, holy crap, I need to actually start putting effort into this. And yeah. those sort of matches always end up winning me over pretty uh, comfortably. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this for what it was. I, I was maybe a little less high on this yeah. one than you were. I mean, it, you know, it was a good opener. Um, I mean, I've seen Himeka in a few other promotions and she's good. I mean, she still looks kind of, a bit green yeah. um and i think she only she's been around only as well like a year and a bit right like 20 end of 2017 i think she's right so you know to be expected and, and she looked good you know she had some good mo moments and obviously asuka i love she's really great um so yeah i did nothing bad about it but yeah i thought it was a solid a solid opener 
Yeah, I agree with that. It's, you know, it's not something I'm going to look back on or recommend people to go out of the way to. But if you want an opening match against especially a bigger opponent like Asuka, it's this is the sort of match I'm going to probably eat up every time. It's, yeah. Couldn't have went any longer because that might have been a bit of a drag. But yeah, every few times a year, there's a match like this that I will look back on fondly and then stupidly consider for a match of the year contender, even though it definitely does not deserve that by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I, I, because I, I'm a dumb dumb. I, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't put it out there. But <laughs> it was good, you know, and a good, good, good sort of like way to get Oscar on the card and get like he make yeah. a bit more experience. Yeah, um, I'm hoping we start seeing Asuka, especially in Seedling, uh, get a little more of a push now that she's a freelancer as well. I don't know if we will, but yeah. I it would be great to see her maybe get a, a singles title shot or something, because well, I think she'd be a good fit for one of those titles, at least. I think, um, as far as I remember, on one of the shows that hasn't aired yet, I think the Niigata show, which was the beginning of February, maybe, she got a pin on Nanae in a tag match. So it sounds like they're probably heading towards Asuka getting a title shot at some point, would be my guess. I would hope so. There's no, I, Especially now that she's a freelancer, there's really no reason to not do that unless... I was going to say, unless maybe DDT uh, snatches her up and puts her uh, like as an official DDT roster member, but they let Saki work seedling shows. So I don't see yeah. that being a problem either. Yeah, um, obviously depending on what, what 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 she does in the next few months i guess we'll maybe we'll yeah. sort of learn a bit more but yeah if she stays freelance i feel like that seedling could be a good a good place for her to like be in the upper mid card on a oh, sort yeah. of regu semi-regular basis you know she's she can put on really good singles matches she can put on good tag matches um so yeah i, I hope that they keep using her and it would be you know it would be a good sort of title match for nanae where you won't really expect asuka to win but they put on a good match. Yeah, again, completely agree with that. But um, yeah, we're just about through that then. Do you have any sort of finishing thoughts on this show? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought it was good. I, I think for me, the highlights were really the, the high speed match and the, and the tag title match. Um, the main event, a little bit, a little bit underwhelming, a little bit sort of not, not probably won't go down as a particularly memorable match. I, I imagine uh, once we get a bit further out, um, but you know, it was good, good first win for Nanaya. And um, I think they drew about 700 people for this show. It was 700, 750, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Uh, it was not a huge crowd, but it was definitely yeah. not negligible. It was pr pretty much, I would say like smaller stardom Corican crowd size. Yeah. And I, I had a quick look on, on cage match last night. And it seems like that's kind of in the, the range of most of their Kodako in attendances last year. So yeah. they're not losing numbers, at least it seems. So yeah, I feel like they've been pretty steady since they started running uh, from what I've noticed. Uh, they've never really boosted up that much. Maybe they were doing slightly less for a, like in their earlier days, but I don't think so. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty good for them. At some point you do want, hope that they start getting a little bigger, but they run, uh, in, especially in Tokyo enough where they might just be a little oversaturated for what they are at this point. Yeah. I mean, they seemed like they did a sellout in Niigata when they yeah. went there, which was their first Niigata mm -hmm. show, I believe. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it was a small venue. I think, I think it was maybe like two, 300, but you know, that's not a sellout. Good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it, it'd be, it'd be nice to see them getting bigger crowds, um, especially for the quality of matches that they regularly put on. But, um, yeah, they, they seem, they're obviously doing okay, given that they, they, they seem to be doing this sort of like monthly big show and then a couple of small shows around that. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Disappointed about the Sasamura injury, obviously, but yeah. That's, uh, hopefully uh, they'll, they'll, no. they'll, they'll have some contingency plans around that. Yeah, that's pro wrestling in general. Somebody's going to get hurt at some point, and it's always going to be the worst possible time. But uh, I like, w like we mentioned, I don't think uh, there it's really going to hurt Sasamura's trajectory that much long term. Uh, hopefully, gets another title shot at the very least when she gets back. But yeah, her and Nakajima, I hope we have not seen the last of them. No, I, I imagine uh, a Impact will be back. Yeah, at some point uh, when she's cleared. But yeah, it's a bit like I suppose a bit like Mio Momono getting injured. 
last year as well, you know, when she was tag champion and it's just, I suppose the wave hiatus was a little bit better for that, but you know, it's, it's just bad timing when you're in the middle of a title run to come down with one of these injuries that yeah. puts it on the shelf for a while. Um, so hopefully, yes, yeah, that they, they've got something going forward, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this one. I definitely recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it already. Um, so yeah, definitely those two matches, high speed and, and the tag match. And um, hopefully we sort of see who Nanaya's next opponent is. Hopefully, well, we, so we know that one. So yeah. that's Yuna, that should be good. And then after that, uh, yeah, hopefully like Asuka or something. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, thank you, Sebastian, for joining me on this then. Um, you got anything you want to plug before I cut the cord on you? Yeah. Uh, not, not particularly, to be honest. Just uh, thanks for having me. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Happy to have you on. Uh, you can follow Sebastian on Twitter at TWF87. You can follow me on Twitter at Private Eyeball. And uh, follow the podcast at Eyeball Podcast. Check out the Private Eyeball show. It's on iTunes. Leave a review. You will not be finding this segment on the show, but you know future segments like this, maybe I'll do them live, but I'll probably uh, record them at the very least and put them on the podcast. Not soon, but eventually I plan to do this sort of thing. So Thank you, people, for joining us. Thank you for watching After the Fact if you are not watching live, and have a good day. I hit the wrong button. Whoops. I'm still broadcasting. Bye-bye, everybody.